Hey, Mitch. Mitch? Man, I swore I told him about the 40th anniversary of Flash Gordon. Uh, I know, I'll try and contact him using telepathy like they do in the movie. Uh, it's me, Ed. Uh, do you read? Over? Ed, it's Sam Jones, Flash Gordon here. Sam Jones? Hey, Sam, uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, we're just talking about Flash Gordon and the anniversary. I wanted to wish you a belated happy anniversary. Sam, I should be wishing you a happy anniversary. Hang up. I I've got to go. Where? Mitch is coming. Take care. Blessings to all of you. And same to you, Sam. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ed. I forgot what time it was. I was outside and... Uh... Things got a little crazy. Are we all set for the 40th anniversary of Flash Gordon? Absolutely. Let's head to Mongo. Hey, by the way, do you know anything about this hot hail that's going on? This is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Halleck. And welcome to another episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. One of my favorite movies of all time. We're going to be looking back on the 40th anniversary of Flash Gordon. But before we begin, a big thank you to all our new subscribers. Hope you enjoyed our last episode, which had Mitch eating his 31-year-old Batman cereal. How have you recovered? Oh, let's just say it was spectacular. <laughs> uh, I was okay. A little uh, green around the gills, but it was all right. It could have been worse. I'm still here. And amazingly, I'm resistant to most form of bacteria now. <laughs> well, or should I say bacteria? Oh. I see what you did there. So yeah, you, thank you. you. Thank you so much for, um, you know, uh, subscribing. We've had a big influx. You know, that was for our 200th subscriber and we're well um, on our way to 250 already, which is fantastic. And um, thank you to everyone who's been viewing. What should uh, the viewers do if they want to uh, find out a little bit more about the show? and if when they we've got want new more, If they want more mention Ed in their life and who doesn't want that and they want to know when things are happening, not only should they subscribe by hitting the button below, but also hit the notification so they'll be alerted to when we have a new episode. And I've just done some research. If they hit the like button mm -hmm. on our shows as well, it helps with the YouTube algorithm and brings us up more in the rankings. So even if you've already subscribed and you've already been notified, hit the like button sometimes. That is if you like the show and yeah. who wouldn't. And that helps everybody and the world goes around the sun and we're all happy and we're just peachy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, today we're talking about something that you're not so peachy about, nah. it's, but it's one of my all time favorite movies. It is Flash Gordon from 1980. Yep. It just celebrated a few days ago, it's 40th anniversary. And um, I love this film, but before we get into the movie, and I know that it's not your favorite film, Mitch, uh, I thought we'll talk a little bit about, you know, we're not going to delve too deep into it, but just talk about, you know, what I like about it. Certainly, um, maybe some of the misgivings you have about the film, but we'll talk a little bit about the um, history of um, Flash Gordon, because he's one of the um, oldest comic book characters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, absolutely. Yeah. Now, comic books is what I know, because that's what I do for a living as the maker of Terrificon, Connecticut's Terrific Comic Con, happening every summer at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. I have been a lifelong comic book fan, and even before I could read, I knew about Flash Gordon because my dad would sit me down in front of the TV it was a cheap babysitter. And what it was is they would run these serials, these old time movie serials on Saturday morning TV on Channel 9 in Secaucus, New Jersey. And they would show Buster Crab in Buck Rogers, but they also showed Buster Crab as Flash Gordon from three different movie serials. Now, Buster Crab was also an Olympic athlete. 
and he was a big to do, but he was also in Tarzan, like I mentioned, Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon. He was like the Harrison Ford of the 30s because he was in all these comic book superhero type movies. But Flash Gordon was based on a comic strip that began in 1934 by artist Alex Raymond. And it was this fantastical journey to the stars. It had a polo player named Flash Gordon who gets sucked into this other world, Mingo, Mongo, or yeah, Ming, Mongo, something like that. Mongo, yeah. Mongo, yeah. And there's Dale Arden, who becomes his love interest. And then there's the crazy Dr. Zarkoff. All the characters that you know from the 1980 film were in the original serial and the comic strip and all the stuff that made it a legendary thing. And it ran for years. I Absolutely. mean, Flash, Flash Gordon was one of the most popular comic strips ever i mean it was even inspiring you know superheroes to come like superman and anything really because that made the template that was the you know daring duo the the, the heroic guy that was on these crazy adventures the, the old monsters. american the old american hero and i suppose yeah, bl blonde hair blue eyes you know all set for that and, and it was yeah. really a reaction to uh the comic uh buck rogers which had come yeah. before it and was yeah. um, a huge success. And I know that, uh, wasn't it at King, um, King- King's Features. King's, yeah, that was yeah, the, the, um, the comic book. Um, they they said, uh, oh, we need to compete with um, Buck Rogers. What can we do? And that's yeah. when they approached Alex Raymond to, uh, and he created, he created Flash Gordon out he of that. He created Flash Gordon, yeah. I mean, but you also got to remember, there's another movie that you're a big fan of, which is also a pulp character, John Carter of Mars. Yes. Which is Edgar Rice Burroughs that's a lot of the same thing where you've got the swashbuckling hero on another planet fighting monsters and such. So, I mean, as original and creative as Flash Gordon was, there were some characters that had preceded him that kind of laid the groundwork a little bit, but Flash took it all the way. I mean, he was literally next to Tarzan, I think the most popular cartoon comic strip character there was. And that's why it was a natural to go to these movie serials. And like I mentioned, not one, not two, but he had three different, movie serials that's unheard of other than like batman mm -hmm. nobody else really had three movie serials actually batman only had two yeah but uh they, they were this, the basis for it and then we'll talk about your movie but i gotta tell you what they did is they took the flash gordon uh serial and they condensed it to about an hour and 10 minute full-length movie and a lot of the elements that are in the 1980 movie i was unaware of because I just didn't like Flash Gordon, but you could see all the things that are going to be in the Dino De Laurentiis production that came out in 1980 are in this serial, this original movie. So I'm thinking more and more, as much as I dislike the film, I do appreciate it because it's almost like an homage to the serial that was so hugely popular. It would almost be like if somebody made a Star Wars remake now, mm -hmm. because that came out over 40 years ago. And it's all something that we grew up with. And imagine a new generation of kids, like eight or nine years old, discovering Star Wars, if they had remade it, you and I would be like, oh, that's blasphemy. How dare you do that? But imagine if they had a new Luke Skywalker and a new Han Solo and everything was different. That's exactly what happens with this 1980 Flash Gordon movie, if you were a fan of the original serial, they're all there, all the characters, all the sets, all the costumes even. It's just done in color with some more flair. Yes. And that's one thing I can give it credit, but I digress. We're gonna go now into the 80s or yes. actually the 70s. Yeah. How did this movie come about? Who's the one that said, let's make a big production out of Flash Gordon? Well, originally, and I will just uh, uh, say that while newer fans loved the new Flash Gordon, really enjoyed it, a lot of the um, old school fans of Flash Gordon thought it was way too campy. And we'll get into yeah. that uh, a little bit. Um, it is what it is. And I, I like that aspect of it. But yeah, let's um, basically, um, you know, in the late 60s, uh, Dino De Laurentiis was around. He produced um, a couple of... Um, uh, comic book movies, um, for, you know, in the European market. Um, Barbarella is probably the most uh, famous one, I think 1968 um, with Jane Fonda and Duran yep. Duran, who I always, you know, that's where they get Duran Duran. You think of the, yeah. Yep. Which is a pretty, um, you know, far out, uh, 
far out uh, science fiction movie. And um, around that same time, early 70s, um, there was a filmmaker. Um, you may know him. Uh, what's his name? George Lucas? George Lucas? Yeah, I think Wars George guy? Lucas. Yeah. And uh, after American Graffiti, you know, was a huge success, um, he wanted to make a, um, a science fiction film. In fact, he wanted to make Flash Gordon. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, Flash Gordon, the rights were not available at that time because they were held by Dino De Laurentiis, who wanted to uh, make the film. Originally, my understanding is he wanted uh, Fellini, uh, the famed filmmaker, to uh, make the film. Uh, however, that never um, came to fruition. So the rights weren't available. Uh, De Laurentiis, um, who's you know a prolific uh, producer, even at this stage, uh, said uh, no. Um, he was about to gear up to do um, uh, King Kong, uh, which uh, in 1976, which I'm sure we're we're going to talk about in a, oh yeah yeah I was talking well. about that today yeah that yep. was I love that movie yeah, yeah it's it's great. Um, written by uh, Lorenzo Sempo, Semple Jr. as well. Jr., yeah. Um, and uh, so Lucas essentially went away and created Star Wars. That's the um, Cliff Notes version of it. You know, there's a lot more right, right, that right. you can research. And again, we'll say, you know, we're not, we're not, this is not the definitive. I know where this is all you need to know about it, but then you can go a little bit further and do a little bit more research and read more. And there's lots well, of, great I, I'm going to tell you yep. real quick from an aesthetic point of view, from an artistic look, when you mentioned Barbarella, there is definitely a European look to this movie. Okay. Yes. You said uh, Federico Fellini was considered to be the director. I don't know the name of the art director. Maybe you do, but it's you can Danilo... see. Was that? Oh, in Flash Gordon, it's Danilo Donati. Um, I was going to say, it definitely has an Italian look. And what I mean by that, it's very colorful. It's very reminiscent of like an opera almost, you know, with the the, the, the colors and yes. the bright reds and all that stuff. It comes across as a European spectacular, like a circus almost, like a Cirque du Soleil type well, of thing. Well, um, Pauline, Pauline thing. Pell, the uh, film uh, critic, she called Flash Gordon uh, like a uh, a fairy tale set in a discotheque in the clouds. Yeah, which absolutely. I think encapsulates totally. it perfectly. And Donati, um, who did the costume designs, I know we're all over the shop. Um, That's right. Was so um, this movie. he worked with Fellini? Yeah, well, true. He um, he worked with uh, Fellini as a costume designer. But even before it got to that stage, um, De Laurentiis, when he wanted to uh, uh, create Flash Gordon, he worked with Nicholas Rogue. Nicholas Rogue was the director of Man Who Fell to Earth with uh, David oh, Bowie. Oh, David Bowie and Candy Clark. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so basically, uh, they were, that, that was in development, but that was going in a totally different direction than um, De Laurentiis uh, wanted. So they, you know, development hell, I suppose it was a little bit. So that was um, sidelined. And that's when they asked Mike Hodges to come in to direct. Mike Hodges had directed Get Carter, which was a great uh, sort of a, British um, thriller with um, Michael Caine. He also did um, a number of films. He, um, I, what was a lot? I suppose one that mo most, most people may have seen who like science fiction is The Terminal Man, uh, which was based on the Michael Crichton okay. art book. Okay. So, um, which was around, um, you know, early to mid uh, mid 70s or whenever that came out. Mm -hmm. So he, um, Mike Hodges has often said, you know, he's not the right person to direct a big budget science fiction film, but he went along, he went along with it. And I think that was the um, theme for the entire film. It was a bit like Indiana Jones, making it up as you go. They had all oh, these- Oh, there's that, yeah. There's they had all that. these fantastic designs. Um, they had all these fantastic ideas, but you know, I know uh, Mike Hodges was often saying, well, hang on, where does that fit into the script? He often said, uh, Daniel D uh, Danilo Donati, um, didn't speak English very well. And uh, the director often said, uh, I'm not even sure if he read the script, um, but the uh, designs he came up were absolutely fantastic. And I, I, I'll, again, we're all over the shop, but I can't believe that Flash Gordon was not nominated for an Oscar for best costumes or mm -hmm. best production design, because again, even if you, um, it's not your favorite uh, movie, it looks, spectacular and yeah. it's unlike anything you have ever seen and look 
have a look around. You know, people know me. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. But when I went to see Flash Gordon in the cinema in 1980, from the very start, where we see that wonderful, in even more so than Star Wars, I felt the stereo mm -hmm. where the lightning bolts and you had the animated opening Logo. where you saw Alex yeah. Raymond's artwork of the characters with the actors. I thought, wow, this isn't like Star Wars at all. It's totally different. And I really well, like that. I was going to say, there's, I think, where we start to diverge in liking this movie and disliking this movie. That's where the schism starts because I grew up with Star Trek, which is that clean, aesthetic, scientific look of the future, you know, very nice. And all the movies were like that before yes. 2001, Silent Running. We all had that. Logan's Run. Everything was clean and polished and always white, white walls and shiny surfaces and silver and aluminum everywhere. And then Star Wars comes, which is that beat up, lived used in universe, yes, used universe. And the, the color palette is yellow, it's earth tones, it's gray, it's black. There's no bright red in Star Wars. There's no bright blue in Star Wars. Everything is a muted color. And that appealed to me because that was different from all the previous science fiction films and seemed more realistic so i'm in that mindset in 1977 of this is the star wars this is the science fiction that i know and love can't wait to see more of it it's that wild west and outer space look not disco studio 54 in outer space look and that's what happens so much so that when this movie comes out and i gotta be honest with you I never saw Flash Gordon in the movie theaters in 1980 because I could not stand the, the, the trailer for it. I couldn't stand the look of it. I mean, you got to just look at this right now. And you want to talk about this. You look at your background. You've got bright red. You've got flashing lights. You've got color. You yes. look on this side of the house. We've got muted colors. It's all kind of dirty and dungy and run down and everything like that. So this is typical of the type of moviegoer we are. You're yep. more flamboyant and exciting and like that. And I'm more stuck in the mud, dreary, <laughs> doomsday, sunny skies, hot hail. That's yep. all I'm going to say. That's right. Half glass full half glass empty, empty and contaminated <laughs> on my side. so anyway i think that has a lot to do with it because i had no I, no desire to see this movie and the only yes. thing i knew about this movie and we'll get into that is because i have older sisters and they were music fans and they knew freddie mercury because we had the uh, we are the champions and all yes. the freddie mercury queen albums I knew Flash Gordon only because of the music. And that's the only thing that was in my house. I didn't have the comic book. I didn't have any toys. Well, there are no toys, but nothing. And my dad, like I mentioned, loved the original Flash Gordon. And maybe this is where I got to get it too. Yeah. He hated the idea that they took his beloved movie serial that he grew up with in the 40s and 50s and turned it into disco. Okay. Just the, the flashy flash that's what it became it's and in the title think, it's in the title it's in the title but i again i told you this movie to me is just an amalgam of so many different movies i don't know what's going on i mean i know what's going on story-wise i kind of think i do but it looks like one of those 80 70s and 80s oscar musical numbers where they used to get the show girls and the show guys and they would come out and dance and spectacular and you'd have glitter coming down and lights and effects and smoke that's to me a two-hour version of what this flash gordon is it's just all form no substance Ed. well all right and i'm done with my case now present that's your okay. argument sir well i well firstly i'll just say um again when it started production um, they've they assembled a fantastic cast. Max von Sydow as Ming the Merciless, who is up there as one of the great movie villains. I think okay. you know um, he. He's a he, great actor. I'm not oh my gosh! Say, he, and, I mean, he's Max von Sydow. He, he, yep. he's he's a phenomenon. He's like Laurence Olivier. And and he said. that's that's an example of when a comic. You know, not to uh, not to uh, rip off Joe Stuba, but when comic books come to life, come to life. now did know, he want to be in this movie, or yes. was he like their Marlon no, Brando? He wanted, he wanted, wanted to, to be. No, 
he wanted to be in it. We had the wonderful Melody Anderson as uh, Dale Arden, the spectacularly gorgeous Ornella Muti, who I had a huge crush on. Okay, I got to ask you about her. Where did they get her from? Was this her first movie? No, she was. Um, she had done um, a lot of films uh, Europe. in Europe. And a lot of a lot of the cast, uh, obviously, it's 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 a it's an English production, which is, yeah. I suppose, when you sort of think about, um, you know, Flash Gordon, the All American Hero, it's kind of funny that you know they, today, I suppose, you know, it doesn't matter. Batman, Robert Pattinson is, um, you know, he's English. Um, Superman yeah, is English. Bale, Henry Cavill, yeah, yeah, Henry you know, Cavill, all those sort no. of things. It doesn't matter. But back then, you know, I suppose. Um, you know, American films were made in America and, you know, of American characters, but this one was a little bit different, um, you know, filmed in the UK, obviously, and had a lot of European, um, uh, European actors, Italian uh, crew, the production designer, Mariangelo Mulatto um, as well. Who was yeah. that? General Kala, Flash Gordon approaching. What do you mean? Flash Gordon approach. As Carla, um, you had the wonderful Peter Wingard um, from Department S and the Jason King series as Clytus, who I love. Oh, that's who that was. Okay. Yep. Uh, Topol. Fiddler uh, on the Roof. Yeah, Fiddler on the Roof. And, and, and was he in... Uh, he was, was in a James in, Bond. He was... Was, was he, he Never uh, Say Never Again? No, that's, uh, that's Klaus Kinski. He was in... Um, not Julian Glover. That's... Uh, no, I, he was Topol was in one of those movies. I I'll can't. I'll put it down below. We'll put I'll, it down there. We're I'll struggling. He's below. in a James Bond movie. No. But it's interesting because uh Never Say Never Again was written by Lorenzo Semple Jr. And the writer of uh Flash Gordon, Lorenzo Semple Jr., who did King Kong, he did mm. Three Days of the Condor, and he was brought in and um uh, has often been accused of making Flash Gordon, you know, campy. The I suppose the um, correlation between that campiness and superheroes, you sort of think about, well, what's, what's campy superheroes? You probably think of Batman, the 1966 series. Who wrote the um, original and four episodes of Batman? Lorenzo Semple Jr. Correct. There Correct. You so you can see that correlation, but I've always felt that while it was campy in nature and a bit tongue in cheek, it never um, took the, uh, I'll say took the Mickey out of it. I didn't feel like it was, um, was it you like know, it wasn't like Doc Savage, which was another movie based on a, a pulp hero that went yes. too campy or that movie? That, yeah. That's why that movie. It's I a felt it still. Movie. I felt it was still um, uh, reverent to the um, source material and still yeah, treated okay. with respect, but just added a bit of playful fun. I always say it's a bit like. Um, uh, you know, have you ever seen Teen Titans Go, the um, animated series? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know that takes the piss out of you know the it's lighthearted yeah it's not, but it doesn't it's take still, itself seriously. yeah it's still fun and what i do like is that in flash gordon the movie that um you know there are character uh prince baron timothy dalton you know oh, he's, he's playing like a shakespearean it, play yeah he's playing it straight yep he is which i i love it everyone pretty much is pr- playing well, it straight no no everyone in this movie is in a different movie well they're yes. all in their own movie. I'm telling you, you got uh, it was a Timothy Dalton, Shakespearean trained actor. He's taking it dead serious as if he's doing King Lear. That's his performance. Then you've got Sam Jones. We, well, we haven't it. spoken about Sam Jones yet. I was building up to the well, no, I'm, I'm just to okay, the great Sam saying, Jones. Okay, we'll yeah, to, okay, go, go, okay, go. The supporting cast. Yeah. Max Van Cedow is doing this, you know mustache literally twirling yeah yeah he's literally chewing up the scenery he's yeah. doing his bit melody anderson I, i'm not familiar what other work she's done she's doing something like it seems like charlie's angels love boat tv acting type of thing not big motion picture it just seemed odd it seemed like lauren twos from uh the love boat then we've got uh topol who's out of control as zarkov i don't know what he's on he's just like but that back poop crazy we'll just say that and the rest of them are all there and then before you even talk about sam jones brian blessed how can we forget hysterical. Brian blessed. oh he's crazy because he's in his own movie he... stand by my hawkman <laughs> they're trying to flush you out this 
is doing whatever he wants, which is great. But I don't know where he fits in. He steals the scenes when he's in them because you can't get your eyes off the guy because he's so big. No one's where was the director to tell him to bring it down a little bit and kind of balance it out? And no, I but thought that's it was the this is not the film. It all that no you would think no, doesn't listen. work. It all works. It no, all and works. I thought that I thought that was his acting. I saw this 1936 serial. No, that's the character because even the actor who played him in the 30s was this big, boisterous, j- big fellow with a beard and loud. And, he's oh, he's oh, a combination oh. of like um Santa and you know like a Viking at the uh, yes, maybe yeah. Obelix from you know the Asterisk but that's series. The, that's the character in the comic strip because yeah. I complained about the acting and then my friend Jerry Ordway, comic book artist and writer Jerry Ordway, was talking to me about this and he said no. That's the character in the comic strip. He's this loud Viking-like character mm-hmm. who's like, ho, ho, let's go, you know, and that's what you get. So I have to take it back. For all those years, I thought Brian Blessed was nuts. He's not. He's actually on point and he's doing with the character. It's just so uneven when you look at all the other performances going on. That's See, I don't point. I don't think that. When you think of all the different also, when you, if you think of, well, Okay, if you think of Mongo and all its yes. different, you know, the principalities, you've got Ardentia, you've got um, you get the forest city, Arborea, you the you've got yeah. um, Phrygia, you've got all these. So they've all got these different personalities and they're all thrust together in this one thing. I think that if everyone was playing it, um, you know, seriously, seriously it yeah. wouldn't work with those fantastical backgrounds, those amazing costume designs, and the music, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But we can't obviously talk about Flash Gordon without talking about Sam Jones. Sam J. Jones as Flash Gordon, who I think is fantastic as Flash Gordon. He's got that, he's that naive, that wholesomeness in his performance. Uh, you know, rumor has it that, um, you know, they were searching for Flash Gordon. I think they looked at Kurt Russell. They looked at... Um, was it Harvey Keitel? You know, can you imagine that? Really? Um, a lot of I, I, I I'm trying. I'm wondering if I'm thinking of Han Solo, but um, yeah, was, they did do a yeah. lot of they he did a search. A short, yeah, he's not that tall. I can't picture him being all American. And uh, was um, and it was uh, was it Dino De Laurentiis's wife who saw Sam Jones either on the Dating Game, um, because he was essentially or Playgirl. A, he did a yeah. nude spread in Playgirl. Maybe that's what caught her that eye. Could, yes, that's right. Um, and um, also, um, he was um, had a small part in a uh, ten. Yeah, uh, with the Bo Blake Derek. Edwards he movie. Was, yeah, yeah, he played her husband. Yep. So um, he um, caught uh, their eye, and um, I think he was great as Flash Gordon. He he did. He had that. I mean, he he is. Um, I suppose the eyes of the audience going into this and going yeah. what. You know, as we all were when we were seeing it for the uh, for the very first time. Now you've had the pleasure, and we should thank Mr. Jones for our little uh, intro at the uh, at the start. Um, but you've had the pleasure of um, spending time with uh, Sam. Oh yeah, yeah. He's been a guest at my terrific con uh, comic book convention at least twice that I can remember, and uh, always a top guest, always a huge draw. Uh, now he's got a resurgence in his career because he appeared in these Ted, the talking teddy bear movies, part yes. one and two, because my son, who was only 18 or 19 at the time, instantly recognized him. He's like, oh, my God, that's the guy from Ted. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's Flash Gordon. He saved us all in 19 hours or whatever. And uh, no, he's got a whole new fan base from those two uh Seth MacFarlane films. Yes. And his lines are never ending. I mean, for three days at my show, Sam Jones commands a fan following like no one's business. And he sets up right in the middle. He's got this beautiful giant backdrop that's done by the artist Alex Ross, who's a yes. humongous, humongous Flash Gordon fan. One of the greatest talents ever in comic book art history. But he's also the biggest Flash Gordon fan I know. And he loves painting that image of flash gordon it's on the box set it's on the dvd there's a brand new book that just came out called Mm -hmm. the very rare scene art of our alex ross and there's pages devoted to uh flash gordon so sam has this massive backdrop that he uses that's based on this work again 
Sam Jones is a personality. He fills a room. He comes in, and I can see why they picked him to be Flash Gordon in this film. He might not have had a huge resume, but he has a commanding performance. He has a charisma. He has a likability about the guy. You can't help but love Sam Jones. Yeah. He walks in. He's your best friend. Yeah. Everybody who meets him just instantly loves Sam Jones, and that's just the way he is in real life, and it comes across in the movie. He's a yeah. nice guy. He's a really yeah. nice guy. I, so he's I, a great hero right there. I agree. And I think um, he, um, you know, he, he makes the movie um, and uh, is, a, is a joy, a joy to watch. Um, what I didn't know at the time when I was watching the movie that he's um, the majority of his uh, lines were um, dubbed by yeah. actor Peter Marinka. Um, I had no idea. I mean, basically he had a falling out with Dino De Laurentiis. His representation um, probably didn't, um, represent him as best as he should um mm -hmm. so basically once uh the ph principal photography finished when he was to be called back for um adr or looping or things like that he refused yeah. um and uh as a result they got a, a an american actor who was living in the uk peter marinka to um you know redub his lines as a 10 year old kid didn't you pick didn't it up notice. i didn't notice well I only found out when Lou Ferrigno, aka the Hulk, told me at the show two years ago. We were in the limousine coming from uh, the airport, and Lou says, because he's best friends with Sam, and we were yeah. talking about the movie, and he said, "You know, they dubbed him in that movie." I go, "No." He goes, "Oh yeah," and he told me the whole backstory about it. I was unaware of it too, but that was not an uncommon practice for years because if you watch the Legend of Greystoke, Andy McDowell's dubbed by Glenn Close. Uh, if you see Clinton Spilsbury in Legend of the Lone Ranger. He's dubbed by James Keach, who's Stacy Keach's brother. Yes. For the entire film, so it's not unheard of. No, and even in actors, um, well, even in the Flash, star of the movie. even yeah. in Flash Gordon, there's um George Harris, who we know as Captain Katanga. Yeah. Um, from um, he plays the uh, Prince of Ardentia. Um, mm -hmm. he is dubbed in the movie, but on the soundtrack, you can hear his um original. Oh, original really? Voice, yeah. Speaking and of, course, of Raiders of the Lost Ark, I was going to say, yeah. as a Raiders fan like you and I, there's a lot of Indiana Jones supporting characters in there. There is starting Fox. with William oh, Hopkins, yes, AKA as Munson, Porkins. as huh? uh, yes, he's Munson, who's um, yeah, lab assistant or sidekick of uh, who gets run over by the uh, by the or gets killed by um, Flash Gordon's jet, I suppose. Yeah, um, plane or something. Yeah. And because it's funny, his name is Munson, you say? Munson, yes. That's the brand of chocolate over here and uh, where I am. There's a whole line of chocolate. Uh, I always I always thought as a kid he was Bunsen. And I thought, oh, that he's playing homage oh, to... Uh, no, well, Bunsen from um, The Muppets as the lab assistant. That's what I'm thinking. That, yeah. yeah, like the little but, Bunsen. Um, but there's this no, Philip Munson's Stone, chocolate. who's the high priest, Bloombert in uh, Indiana the Jones. The rifle in Temple of Doom. yes. There's also, yeah. um, there's Star Wars connections as well. Um, you know, that was filmed around the same time as uh, Empire Strikes Back, obviously. You've got yeah. John Hollis, who was Lobot. He's, oh, um, who was he? He's the observer with, you know, the um, eyes, you know, who's going, yeah. strange object in the Imperial Vortex. That's, that's Lobot, huh? That's oh, Lobot. I didn't know that. John Hollis. No, he was working. He was busy that summer because he was he doing was. Star Wars Back and then he's doing this. Yes, it's that's funny that he had appliances on his eyes for at the front and then they go let's not do that let's put an appliance at the back of your head for empire yeah, strikes yeah, yeah, back yeah. um so there's well, deep, a, deep yeah. roy is in it deep roy yes uh, he plays a facebook friend of mine but he's a talented actor who's been in a thousand movies that you might not recognize because often he's under makeup he's the pet of the princess i believe that's yes his... princess aura and uh do you know yeah. what his uh character name is i think it's pet no it's fellini oh okay i didn't think it had a name you really come fellini. along come along fellini so uh, oh okay as a, as a nice little um uh, you know homage which is really good so um the, the the story of flash gordon we won't go over you know the to reiterate the story or anything like that however it does look um spectacular and my only disappointment with the film was mm. that the um, while I didn't mind it not being a used universe, like in yeah. Star Wars, the visual effects were not up to industrial light magic magic no, standards. No. Who, who they did were, the effects in that? Sorry? Who did was, was that? The studios? Was a, yeah, it was, I mean? a, it was a British... I'll find out who was the okay, special okay. effects yeah, supervisor. Yeah, but 
Yeah, because I didn't like that at all. It reminded me of years later, they're going to be Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan, where they basically took a fish tank and they poured like colored inks or paints and they got that cloudy. See, I, that, I didn't mind that. I didn't mind that. What I didn't like was the garbage mats that you could see around. Yeah, um, well, that's what I mean, that? the green screens. It's yep. like when we do it here on the show and I have bad green screen, but, you know, I'm using a $13 green screen cloth I got from Amazon.com. I'm not a million dollar pitcher. How much money was spent on this? Was this it, a big- it, it cost $20 million. Wow. Yeah, they didn't but, spend it well. Uh, I don't well, know. Let's they the spend it all on the sets. I think you can see that in the sets and costume design. Um, and um, the special effects are pretty. Um, they are. For the they time, are. They are yeah. this. I think they're pr with the Hawkman and everything like that. You had so many people flying and things like that. There, there was a just, lot of wire work in that. It was see, so. You uh, see the wires, man. You could, but for but, the. Hang on. For the um going for something. For the um 40th Ooh. anniversary box set, nice. they did wire removal for all those. So on the new 4K oh, okay. and Blu-ray, you can't they, they've removed those. They fixed a few things, which is really good. Um and well, you gotta uh, remember too, in a dark and movie theater with the projector bulb, it wasn't it wasn't what do we have nowadays, THX. No. Uh, IMAX. We didn't have crystal clear digital projection back then. You probably couldn't even see the wires. Mostly the bulbs were that low yes. in an old movie theater. I mean, it wasn't state of the art back then. No, yeah, absolutely right. So that was the only thing that, you know, sort of disappointed me a little bit about Well, you know, no, 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 no. What the hell's the deal with those lizard people when he's in that cage? They freaked me out. They have like their mouths are open, but they're in like a green lizard type of outfit yeah. alligator men is that what they're supposed to be and lizard men and they had the um they had their lizard eyes men. sort of to the side yeah yeah well one thing if you're interested in um flash gore i should say uh, let me just move flash here there's the um, animated series that came out 1979 the year before it's a great series and it's quite That's, true uh, lou I can't think of his last name. Lou Shimer. Shimer. Yes, he did a bunch of. He had Batman. He had Tarzan. Yeah, that's his studios. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. So, there. Were, so there's 24 episodes in here, and they're quite. You know, you've got the um, uh, Lion Man. You've got um a lot of the um characters from the um. The Hawkman and all those folks. Yeah, a lot from the from the um the comic book series so if you are uh, are interested you can still uh pick up those and it's really quite good the um the animation's quite good and it's quite true um yeah. so flash gordon came out it was it didn't now again people think that it was a flop okay hmm. it wasn't a flop it uh it cost 20 million dollars to make it made worldwide around 46 million dollars okay. so doubled doubled it it made its money back it was a huge hit in uh uk um, it was a big hit in Australia. It didn't do, um, I think it made 16 million maybe in the United States. It didn't when did it come out? What, what, 1980. What so it did come out oh, December. I know that, but what time, what time of year? December. It came out just okay. a few days ago of this recording. Oh, no, because I'm thinking to myself, that summer we had, obviously we had The Empire Strikes Back. We had The Blues Brothers that yes. came out in uh, June. And in the 1980 Christmas, I'm trying to think if there was a big movie then. It doesn't ring a bell, but I don't know what its competition would have been. Uh, so when it's, I, I know we've joked about this before, but we had, oh, Superman. You had Superman. We had too. Superman the movie. Um, we had Flash Gordon come out. Um, it was a pretty good... Uh, the, the, the Deep? Was that 1980? Uh, I thought that was like 78. Oh, maybe it was. I'm Nick trying to Nolte, think. Jack and Bissett and Robert Shaw. Yeah. So... Yeah, that, that, well, here it was I think seventy nine. I don't know. Yeah, but um, it did it did well. Unfortunately, and and it was you know what the other main disappointment of the movie was at the end, where you had it was either Ming or apparently Clytus picking up the ring. Yeah. Um, and there were two other sequels going to be done. 
Well, the original serial, like I mentioned, there was three. There was uh, Flash Gordon Goes to Mars, I think, and Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. So there was definitely more material. They were, that was signed on. And, and basically... Oh, they were signed up for it. That was oh, signed on, but with, um, you know, the falling out of, Fla of Sam Jones and everything and it not doing as well as... Um, I, I suppose it didn't you like it didn't do Star Wars numbers, you know, that yeah. they were expecting, um, you know, it was um, they didn't obviously uh, make any sequels. But interestingly, one mm. of the, the 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 idea for the sequel was that that was um, that Clytus. So, you know, the wonderful Peter Wingard His who gets, melted away, yeah. uh, who, you know, he get he got thrown on the, um, the spikes. Yeah, the spikes and the I, I thought was always cool. Um, he's actually a clone of Ming, and basically there are all these oh. clones of Ming, you know, in various stages of, and that was going to be, um, basically Ming, the cl a clone of Ming would come back and oh, do that, I which I think is rather interesting. It is, it is. given it's kind of a Star Wars exactly uh, thing. Yeah. Um. So, so I I sort of lament that there were no um there were no sequels and they've been trying yeah. to make a sequel um, to flash Gordon for years and years and years. Um, there was um, uh, you know, many people have tried to put in development. I think at the, at the present time, I think Sam Raimi was attached at one point to um, a sort of a reboot. Um, there was a, in 2007, they did a horrendous TV series, which the was sci-fi so one. Yeah, yeah. Which was so low budget. It just was awful um and uh where mongo looked like vancouver unfortunately yeah and um uh and at the moment i think as of last year taika waititi was attached to oh. doing an animated version of flash gordon well, and you know thor ragnarok is a i was gonna say thor flash ragnarok gordon. reminded me a lot of flash gordon because the, the look the set design the music kind of had that that feel to yes. the soundtrack a bit and so. and i've got to say again i'm i love I love John Williams and an orchestral score, but the music for Flash Gordon by Queen. Uh, here's my, this is my original single from uh, Flash Gordon, mm -hmm. Flash's theme with my, I put my name on it and I drew the Flash Gordon logo on oh. there as, as a 10 year old. Graphic um, design skills are unbelievable. Oh, they are. They are. Thank for coming from you, Mitch. I appreciate yeah, that. I do it for a living. I know yeah. how it works. So. Um, so that score was fantastic. And that's sort of, it is like a concept album because it's got pieces of dialogue throughout it. The single was really great. We can't really play any of the music, yeah, unfortunately, copyright. because we'll get a content match. But um, the music, the single came out. It was um, top 10 in the UK, went to 16 in Australia um it it didn't crack the top 40 in america but the album was um pretty big um now, I, I gotta ask well. you did, did freddie mercury was he a fan of the character or did he know about well they books? were they were brought on um they were originally playing i think pink floyd as a temp track during um during that and um that's when they decided to approach they approached brian may and uh they said yeah i think we can work with this and they created all these um, mm -hmm. you know, songs. And then they got, um, basically there was a problem with the original composer who hadn't composed any, any, um, orchestral music. They got Howard Blake to come in. He had a, he was sick and got, um, you know, had a very small amount of time to do, to flesh out the orchestral portions, but the majority of it is, um, Queen okay. and, um, it just works. That flashes theme is like, Iconic, you know, go it flash. Is. Go. No, everybody knows the that. Whole, uh, flash. Oh, flash. I know. Go they reverse. even, I love, they even used it in mm. um, a, the last season of Flash, go, um, Flash, the Flash, the um, the Grant oh, Gustin yeah, series. Oh, yeah, yeah, the TV show with uh, Grant Gustin. Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, where Ramon was, um, uh, you know, doing, um, Ramon, it's Ramon, I think, yeah. in there, where they yeah, got. The it, lab assistant and stuff yeah, like um, which is great. It's a great score and it just, sets everything up and you know how you said it was a bit like a an opera yeah it's, it is a it's, a, it's a rock opera and i've always thought wouldn't that make a fantastic broadway, broadway show? Play music no it uh, and like i told you it feels like a broadway show it yeah. seems like something i would see in new york on stage you yeah. know with the costumes and everything even the angles because i could see in my mind when the soldiers and the troops are coming down the stairs in those red outfits and they kind of yes. do that low angle 
and you hear their footsteps all in unison. Shun, 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 shun. Yes. It sounds like this is going to be Ming and he's going to take that. They remind the me of uh, from Wizard of Oz, the, um, you know, the. the uh... Well, they made a, a Broadway show. It was called The Wiz. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. And of course, Wizard yeah. of Oz. But anyway. Um, it, no, look, but you're right. They, they Somebody should because it's almost there already. It's almost yeah. like a rock opera. It's this close to being Tommy. Yeah. You know, if they just tinkered with it, they would have had a cult. Well, they do have a cult classic. It is a cult classic. And that's why we're talking about it 40 years later. The um the Blu-ray um, box set or the 4K they've um released by Studio Canal looks absolutely gorgeous. In 4K, it looks spectacular. The colors pop. Um, it is. I um, have the uh, the the Blu-ray that came out a couple years ago for yes. the thirty fifth, maybe, and it yes, this opens like this. It's got another Alex Ross beautiful artwork on the cover from Alex Ross. If you that, can pick uh, up the the new version, um, it's well worth it. The uh, I think that box set that you have is only a, a foreign release in the U.S. I saw it over at Best Buy. It's just the disc. There's none of the extras. Yes. I think. Well, you, you still get that. that yeah, you can go to Amazon UK. Yes, and you can order it, and you'll get that box set. Like you yeah, because the four Ks, four K discs are region free, but um, yes, I think it, it also it. comes with the documentary Life After Flash. Um, Which is a great. I, I've seen that already. That's a great. Yeah. So the um, it comes with um, uh, the uh, the patch. It comes with um, some great booklets as well. Some uh, there's some great. There's the great. Um, yeah, that's Alex the cover Ross, of the, uh, the um, DVD artwork. I have upstairs. Yeah. Um, it's got a lot of great. Um, you know. But it's yeah. an Ella Moody, they're all fantastic. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, it's got some great um, artwork oh, yeah, and things like some, that. There's some memorable scenes in that film, that's for yes. sure. Um, uh, I was going to say, comic book wise, uh, there is an adaptation beautifully drawn by artist Al Williamson, who, if you like Star Wars, you'll know that because he also did the adaptations of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, yes. and he worked on newspaper strips. Al Williamson is famous for the Star Wars strips, but he also worked on, I think, Flash Gordon and a pile of other ones. The comic book was given to me by my friend Scott Martin. There's a three-pack. I don't have it with me. It's, it's actually in the next room. I should have grabbed it, but it's a three-pack uh, comics. It's in a poly bag, like a little shrink wrap bag that has all three of them in there. I think that actually goes for a pretty penny uh, as a club. I, do, I don't even have that. Um, I think it's like 50 or $60 yes. US maybe or more yep. in nice condition because they did not merchandise. Like you said, I have seen since, uh, what are those folks, retro? They make the little action figures that kind of look like, yeah, here you go. I've seen that. So, as a flash yeah, movie. so fun. It's it's funny. Um, they didn't merchandise uh, the heck out of it like they would with sales. And it would have seemed like a no brainer to do. Migo brought out earlier on, um, maybe early seventies, mid seventies, a series of Flash Gordon figures and a play set and things like that. Um, when the film came out, there was really um, nothing. You had the soundtrack, you had, um, there was a sticker, uh, I think in Europe, there was a sticker book. There was a, I don't know if it was a Ben Cooper um, but some, you know, sort of Flash Gordon costume. Um, yeah, there were surprised. the comics. Yeah. Um, I well, isn't had... the, the record album? I remember the record album was a yellow cover. Yes, Did it say Flash? I couldn't. I've got mine buried away somewhere. Okay, there yeah, was, um, I do remember the, my there sister's There were comics. Um, and then yeah, follow the design of, you know, yeah. the movie um, a little bit. Um, there, there really wasn't a lot of Flash Gordon merchant. There was, a, in 1983, there was an Atari video game. Um, oh really? Yeah, and there was um, an amazing pinball machine that they brought out, which I would love to get one day. Um, it was pretty in amazing. In 1980, there was a flash pinball machine. Yeah, I probably saw it at the arcade because that's where we would all hang out. It was. It was. It's it. a great. It's it's a tough one, but it's a really good one with the strobe and everything like that in it. Um, Did it play but, the flash theme when you press the button? Uh, I can't remember if it played it, but it was. It had a real. The attract mode on it was fantastic. It was, it was yeah, an yeah. awesome pinball, and the artwork was really good as well. Now, was it released on VHS? Was there any extra scenes? Is there any deleted scenes that they've never they, put out? Look, they filmed. They filmed some things, but um, certainly on on the 4k there's no deleted scenes they talk about them um mm. but they don't they don't really delve into that sort of stuff unfortunately so um 
yeah, there wasn't a lot of merchandise. It took the guys at um, Entertainment Earth and um, I suppose Biff Bang Pal to um, create some new figures. They brought out um, some fantastic um, action figures. Oh gosh, a few years ago, they go for quite expensive uh, oh, really? prices well, at the I, moment. Uh, I know pretty- there's this, there's the Funko Pops. I have yes. mine here signed by Mr. Sam Jones at my show. And yeah, there he is. I was going to say, here's the back of it. Yes. And we can see what's what was available back then. I should say, they also brought out um, the, uh, they had the um, the novelization with the fantastic artwork there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also brought out um, just some tie-ins with... Um, oh, those are cool. Yeah, so these are... Ba- these are just re-releases of the what, original. Are those photo covers or is that artwork? What, I didn't see that. No, it's a photo cover. That's, that's a photo. Yeah. yeah. So they're all the same. Apart from now, that, is, that one, just, is, is that just chapters from the movie? The, or is no, that these are original stories by Alex Raymond. So oh, they're right. just sort of tied in. Um, I was going to say, I have these when he was at my show. I mentioned he was in TED. So he's oh, kind of got a new one there that's signed by Sam. And then we've got... Yeah. He and Melody Anderson, which I sent you one as well. Oh, uh, that's there. there we go. That's that up there, yeah. yeah. And then there's a black and white one. There's actually a great one that I had just gotten uh, a fan writ, wrote to us, writ to us. Uh, it was done by artist Boris Vallejo. Yeah. I think it might be on the cover of one of your uh, your collections. There, it's um, a bluish background, like a swamp background, and Sam in uh, Sam. Yeah, and standing there holding up a laser rifle. It's it's a rare image. I don't see it used often for promotion, but I, I could have sworn I've seen it in um, your collection there. I don't know where it is. I probably I probably do. Well, I'll put a pic- picture up if I can find yeah, it. If you do, if you go find it, it's Boris Vallejo, who was a yep. big artist in the late seventies, eighties. I've got I've got a um I've got yeah. a couple of uh, empire. Oh, there goes oh, your. My it's flash. jumping off the stands, yeah. yeah. I've got um a uh, couple of uh, an Empire Strikes Back posters by him. Yeah, yeah, he did one nice one with the Yoda and everything. Was that is that was there a Darth was there Vader with the cross part? swords? So there was that. Um, they're bringing out now, and they look absolutely amazing. Um, to the um Hot Toys quality twelve inch figures of Flash. Um, you can also get Ming the Merciless and they're doing um, Flash's rocket cycle, which is like, oh, really huge, but it oh, will what? like a, 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 a life size scale. Well, to 12 to 12 inch. Oh, yeah, the 12 inches. Oh, OK. I was like, wait, is that the thing you could ride in? Because that was in the movie Ted. Yes. Uh, too. He does that whole thing where he's on the rocket sled there. Yeah, that would be funny. Um, right, maybe you could build that as a prop for. See, if Terrificon happened this year, unfortunately it didn't because of the COVID situation, but we had talked with Sam and he was working on doing a 40th anniversary big event. And he was yes. saying, oh, we can maybe even get Brian Blessed to come over. And that would have been something because he doesn't really come out much. Yeah. Uh, but Star Wars fans know him as well as the voice, if Boss, not maybe the Boss Black Ness? Ness from the Phantom Menace episode one of Star yeah. Wars. And, uh, he also that voice of his. Did he do other cartoon voiceover work or? Oh, look, possibly. Blessed? He's got such a. Um, he sounds like John Reese Davies to me a lot. I always a think little, of him like, you know. I mean, he was he was in Blackadder as well. Um, if you've watched the Rowan. Oh, okay. okay. Um, he's just got a such a such a presence. Yeah. Um, and you know, his Gordon's alive. You know, is yeah. just. Uh, Everywhere. In fact, you can. He's selling on his website. Um, you know, bumper stickers with Gordon's is alive Gordon's that look like alive? a. Uh, is it Gordon's gin? You know the uh, gin label. Oh yeah, there's a gin, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, which is quite good. Um, <laughs> there are, you know, there's flash T-shirts and things like that. All I would say is, you know, life at the moment is uh, rough for a lot of people. Um, you know, spirits are down. What I would recommend, if you want to lift your spirits, go watch Flash Gordon and um just have have fun if you've got a 4k tv with surround oh my gosh it's great fun okay i i'll admit in preparation for the show i watched it again yeah it, it took me two nights to sit through it though i there's this 
for all the things you just said, absolutely. If you want to change a pace, if you need something to bring your spirits up in these dark times at the moment, by all means, watch it and have a good time. It. Unfortunately, I just never got got it. And that that's it is what it is. I that's mean, some it. people like Star Trek. Some people like Star Wars. Some people like Raiders Lost Ark. Some people like the High Road to China. <laughs> no, I don't think there's anybody that likes the High Road to China. Well, Tom, Tom Selleck Tom, does. But I'm just saying, and that woman, Bess Armstrong. Yeah. But other than that, it's just now. Like, hang on, wasn't what? wasn't Brian Blessed in High Road to China, or was it John Reese Day? It was Brian Blessed, wasn't it? It was Brian Blessed in there. Yeah, I see. Whew. So anyway, that's just dumb luck. I had no idea. <laughs> but uh, it, it is. I just, I did like I said before. I there's just something about it. I just can't get into it. That's all. I tried. I tried. I watched it. That's all I can. I know some people that have seen it a thousand times. Like I've seen Raiders Lost Ark thousands of times. Star Wars thousands of times. I just don't get the hook. I see it all there. I see the color. I see the sets. I see the music. I see the fun the actors are having. It just doesn't come together for me. Maybe because I'm such a fan of comic books. Maybe because I have comic books all around me and stuff and i kind of take it a little too serious yeah and that's why i can't you know let it go and just you know release myself or maybe i'm not under the influence of anything that's a possibility it's the ball well. worms it's you need you've you've been experienced the ball worms too many times so all i can say is if you do like the film uh there's a great um facebook group called the flash gordon movie uh archive um, I'd recommend, um, you know, joining that. Um, the guy's name is David Oliver, and he's got a collection of original props from the movie and costumes. Oh. Like, uh, amazing. I remember going to Planet Hollywood in Geelong, uh, Geelong in Melbourne, um, mm -hmm. and they had a few things. They had um, the uh, Superman's uh, key. Oh, it must have been, a, I don't know if it was a replica or the original, you know, the um, kryptonite um, sort of key that he would, not kryptonite, uh, oh, I the, uh, the crystals? Crystal. Yeah, 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 the crystals. Yeah. They had um, uh, uh, John Travolta, Tony Monero's shoes from Saturday Night Fever, and they had Flash Gordon's sword. Um, oh. You know, the one, you know, this, the one uh, that's on the cover. Yeah, 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 that's iconic. That, yeah. that one there in a frame, and I thought, I wonder if I could ever get that. He's I, got, sure he's got I, that. I can't believe they haven't made a prop replica of that. Yeah, I know. Like well... Too. Something. there you go we, we we should get on to it um so um so yeah so have a look at uh that if you're interested watch the film and again you know i again you're absolutely right if if everyone liked everything we it'll be a boring world this show would only have one episode and we wouldn't be doing every week i mean that's right that's right but hopefully land, of the, lost. land yeah. of the lost wouldn't be our number one show that's we don't right. know that's right. Hopefully we've inspired you to maybe take a take a first look or another look at um, Flash Gordon. You know, with Christmas coming up, what a great way to, it's a great present um, to uh, buy someone and you can, after you're um, eating all that turkey, sit down and uh, you'll be laughing like uh, Prince Voltan, you know, I think wow. so many things. And we've missed out so many things that we could have talked about the show, but um there's plenty of resources. We, we, we give people a smattering of flash. That's that's right. A flashering. I don't even know what I'm talking about. We're, we're flashing right now. You hey, Ed, I think there's only one way to end this show. Uh, are you going to do it? Ready? Is that what you're doing? One, two, yep. three. three. Yeah! yeah! Don't forget, watch Mitch and Ed's excellent adventure. I'm Ed Dollister. I'm Mitch Halleck. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.